Yeah, welcome to our next coffee break. Hopefully you enjoy this coffee break. My name is Michael Bass, Senior Vice President for Intergraph. Uh, today I want to explain you a little bit materials management actually in engineering, what it makes sense to do in the engineering phase and around gathering all the materials basically you need. So in engineering, uh, you're collecting a lot of bill of materials typically into, by drawings. So you have an isometric, you have an electrical drawing, and you're loading this information into a materials management system. And you can see, I put you some examples on it. For example, I have here a drawing, drawing number 1010A, drawing number 101B, and here are items in it. So these are typically called bill of material items, uh, 20 foot of a pipe, one each of an elbow, 45 degree, another pipe, and so on. So now typically you would not buy this material just by, by having the drawings because you would have thousands and thousands of drawings. You want to summarize all the material, all the same material, right? So you want to say how much pipe do I need, how much elbow I need, and put this basically into requisitions. So this is a typical engineering process. So you will have the bill of materials loaded. These are the, your requirements from a 3D model and then turning them over into requisitions, okay? So that's the, the typical uh, name. So now if we take an example here, I have here pipe 20 foot, another 10 foot, another five foot. So this is in total 30, 35 foot of pipe. So actually I create a requ uh, uh, requisition with 35 foot. Make sense? At least for me, obviously. So. Uh, so it's a pipe of 35 foot. And then you send this over to procurement and let's buy it. But hold on, this is actually not right. So what's missing? So missing is parameters. This is dependent on which project phases you are, which project phase you are, the quantities. There's some rules about quantities. You can't buy a 30 foot pipe. You buy in standard lengths, okay? Uh, and then obviously perhaps you want to group it. You want to split this into different deliveries. I want, I want now 1,000 pipe, 1,000 foot of pipe in November, another 1,000 foot of pipe perhaps in December, for example, you will split. Now let me, let me do an example. For pipe, you typically buy by 20 foot. So standard length is 20 foot. So you can't buy 36 foot. So the next standard length you can buy is then 40 foot, right? So the system, a materials management system, is automatically converting actually what you need into purchasing quantities. So that's the requirement quantity, and this is the purchasing quantity basically you need. But hold on, perhaps now in, a, in an early project, perhaps you say, yeah, we don't buy 40 foot, we only want to start by in big, always perhaps 50% more in the beginning, or 10% more in the beginning. Let's say you want to buy 10% more in the beginning, because it's the beginning of a project. So then the calculation is, I take the 35 plus 10%, how much is this? Uh, oh, 39, I think, or not sure, 38.5, I think it is. So it comes out also again to, to 40 foot, right? So, so we're buying then this 40 foot of pipe. So that's a normal process. One more thing, so engineering is still cranking and loading bill of materials in it. So there's still more materials coming in. So for example, suddenly I have another drawing coming in. C with pipe, let's say, uh, I, I just do 20 foot more. Now you start your materials management logic again. You compare the quantities. The system is then saying, okay, I bought 40 foot before. Okay, now, let me just remove this. I need 35 plus 20, I need 55 foot, all right? You can't buy 55 foot. We said it's 10% more also. 
So actually I need 60.5 foot, kind of a deal. So the next 20, actually I need 80 foot. Now, that means I need to buy plus 40 foot more. So you see how it works? So that's, this is how materials management actually works in engineering, so that the right quantities engineering needs will basically send, send to procurement. And this is an, the whole engine, this is, this is the reason why these processes are in place and so unique to the, uh, our industry in EPC. Thanks, hopefully it makes sense. Michael Buss.